Yeah, I want to start out by <clears throat> saying thanks to the fans, specifically the student section. I thought they were unbelievable tonight. I thought the atmosphere when they came in um, at the – it was about 5.30 when I walked out and they were rushing to get their seats was really cool. I thought they did an outstanding job creating energy, specifically in the first half. It's always great when you look up at the Rock M and the grass is covered with fans. And I thought um, it was a really good environment tonight and really appreciative of people finding a way on a Thursday night to be here to support us. Um, so I want to start there. Also, you know, it's always great to be 1-0. and That's the, the mindset and what you want to do. I thought there were some really good moments in the game. Obviously, there was some uh, a real lull in the third quarter that got sloppy that we got to get corrected and get off the tape. Um, but really pleased with the way our special team started fast um, by forcing a short punt and a blocked punt, which led to uh, a touchdown, you know, right there. And I thought the way we ended the first half with the offense scoring, defense going out, going three and out, using our timeouts and scoring again, obviously was the difference in the game. It went on a run right there. Um, you know, defense was two for th holding them two for 13 on third downs, I thought was really good. Um, you know, obviously disappointed with leaving some points out there with our uh, field goal unit, and that's something that's got to get uh, corrected in a hurry. Um, so with that, I'll open it up for the first question, which is what did I evaluate the quarterbacks at? <laughs> Along those lines, I mean, I know you said the plan was Sam gets to the second half. Was that kind of regardless of game situation? Yeah. And Well, I just stepped off the football field, so I don't have any plan for next week. I've, I've kind of told everybody that I've got no preconceived ideas going into it and that I'm going to let the play speak for itself. So I'm going to go back and evaluate the tape. Obviously, the blink assessment would be that, you know, Blady, uh, Brady played a more consistent first half. Um, you know, Sam's interception, the ball bounces off the receiver's chest and bounces up in the air. Maybe it was behind him. Maybe it could have been a better throw. But, you know, I mean, can't tip the ball up there in that situation. That makes it a little bit worse. But, uh, you know, we'll go back and evaluate the tape. I'm not going to make a, a rush judgment there on that decision. But I did think Brady was very efficient. And, and uh, Sam had his moments, too. I mean, that was a nice um, touchdown drive at the end of the game right there and converted a big third and long uh, with that little screen pass to Luther. Good call right there by Kirby. As far as the offensive line, how would you evaluate their play for the game? You know, without watching tape, it's going to be tough. I thought we controlled the line of scrimmage. Uh, felt like we had a bunch of just unnecessary penalties, whether it was holding calls or holding on the perimeter, false starts, things that we got to get cleaned up and taken off the tape. I mean, that's the stuff that really held us back last year. And, and uh, you know, we got to be more disciplined in, in, in fixing that. But, uh, you know, I think we only gave up the one sack. I didn't really feel like we had any pressure on the quarterback outside that one um, and kind of controlled the line of scrimmage. They came out in a t completely different defense. Uh, they, they played a, a, a three down front most of the night, which they've been pretty much a four down front team. So, um, you know, I mean, that was an adjustment. It's a pretty good job by Brandon and the older guys to make that adjustment and get us to the outside zone, which was good. When you're splitting time at quarterback, is there a thought process as to uh, it being better to go first half, second half, as opposed to maybe, you know, three series and then the next guy for a few series, something along those lines? Yeah, I haven't seen a book on how to handle it. You know, Steve Spurrier went every other play. Lane Kiffin last year went every other half. Harbaugh went, you know, every other game. So there's no there's no books on it. So we'll do what we, we feel like is our plan, and we'll make it work. Yeah. Do you want to see? Do you want to see Sam in the first half? Do you want to see him, what he does in the start? Is that important to your evaluation process or not? Nope. It's not important to me. Uh, the results on the field, I mean, he had the same players in front of him, same defense. So we'll look at it and see if we feel like, you know, base it off of this uh, performance fall camp and, and probably even after uh, practice this week if we feel like opportunity was earned or not. What's the question again? You said something like seams. So what's the question? I'm sorry. Yeah, he has a leg up on it. He, that's why he went out there first. Yep. Elon, what did you kind of think of the red zone offense? Obviously, going out, I think, five to six in the red zone, um, connecting with touchdowns there on five of those. Uh, what did you think of that? 
You know, it's always hard to ask me those questions because I get the one I really jarred up about was the the um, missed field goal right there. We called the quarterback draw versus their odd front. And in a tempo situation, you know, we were trying to get to the hitch and didn't find it, which ended up, you know, with the way they played those four eyes, you know, there wasn't much, much movement in there. Um, I don't remember the second down call. I just remember on third down, um, you know, he uh, Sam threw a – it was press and a boundary converted, and he thought it was one-on-one. -on -one. It was clearly two-man, which was a, a poor read there, which, you know, the uh, we had a bunch to the field that uh, versus two-man we would have had a – I'd have to make sure on the tape, but based off alignment, the dig should be wide open. So, you know, disappointed in that execution of series right there. Um, obviously – you know, inside the 20, that's got to be a lock for a field goal with a, a, a guy who's got as much experience as, as uh, Harrison. I don't know if it was all Harrison. I think the laces were not out, um, which, you know, is on both holder and snapper, too. So we got work there to get corrected. You know, you got a, a true freshman and a new guy holding, so we got to get that cleaned up. Um, yeah, I mean, I think you got to give credit. They played a different scheme than what they've shown. They've been more of a four a quarters uh, safeties insert to, to make tackles. They played a lot of odd cover two tonight and didn't, didn't want to give away any free access. When you're in a cover two defense and the mics run down the middle of the field, you're going to have to throw uh, more intermediate stuff. You know, we hit a couple of climb routes over the middle. I think Makai's first touchdown was over that. Um, we hit a couple of, you know, I, I know we hit Luther on that. Uh, it was in between a freedom route and a, and a seam ball there. So, I mean, we had a couple. Um, obviously, our play action game wasn't quite as explosive as we wanted. I think we missed an opportunity to throw a big ball post to uh, Theo in the first quarter or in the second quarter. But, uh, you know, that's that's part of it. They practice, and, and we got to go back and evaluate some of the things we do. But I'm not disappointed in 35 points, which could have easily been 41. With Luther, is he, first of all, is he okay after the game? And what's to say about him? I mean, what did you see making contested catches with some of those shots he took? Yeah, I don't, was he injured? I, I don't know. That's what I'm asking. He just took Didn't he score the shots. Didn't he scored the last play of the game, right? That's fair. Uh, yeah, I forgot. Yeah, so I don't, seems but, good to me. But what's to say about him that, that he made some of those contested catches? I mean, he's a great player. So players make plays. It's not real complicated. You know, so get the ball to your best players, and they make plays. I thought on his touchdown, I mean, all the credit in the world really goes to Connor Tolleson. There's a Mike linebacker bearing down on him, and, and Lou, we've we've repped this and repped it and repped it and constantly um, harped on Connor needing to be really flat, 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 so he can make that block. And we we're always on Luther. You got to trust that he's going to get there for you. And it showed up. Practice execution equaled game day reality right there, and we we scored a touchdown. So. That to me was really exciting. Obviously, um, you know, Lou said before that drive he wanted to get in the end zone. Disappointed on the holding call on the punt return. You know, just another uh, play there that we got to take off the tape. Hey, Eli, what's what's you like the third quarter low? Could you put a finger on why that maybe happened? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different things. Poor execution. Um, they, they were able to, I think the first third down they converted, you know, we kicked off to them. We got them inside. There was a TFL. They got a second down conversion on a sprint out, or they got a second down. Uh, we didn't really run to the flats in a drop eight coverage. Made it a manageable third down or maybe even a conversion there. They converted a couple of third downs, you know, so then they, they get um, time of possession. I mean, they end up winning the time of possession battle, but they controlled the ball. Um, we got the ball. Um, after a forced punt, I think we maybe had four or five plays. The first uh, play, Connor snaps the ball without even a, a clap, which is not good. The second play, the ball bounces off the left guard on a pool, so kind of sloppy. Um, we get a conversion, then we, we have a holding penalty. So, I mean, I'll have to go back and evaluate exactly what happened, but uh, poor execution was the first. Yeah, I don't think they ran the ball very well on us. They had some really new stuff. Really proud of 
of Bake and the defensive staff and really the defense as a whole, you know, we didn't have any idea what he was really going to do. He didn't call plays last year for South Dakota State, so we repped as many of the South Dakota State plays as we could. We even went back and watched some of his junior college tape when he was the OC. I mean, you really had no idea. They went into some some funky personnel. They copied the Tennessee tempo play against us to to try to get the tailback out or the 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 hide player out of the backfield. So there was a lot of things that they threw at us. You know, I know uh, Bake's disappointed in the in, in the touchdown because that really is a play that we should be able to execute much better. Um, you, you know, we needed a push call out of the backers right there. But at the end of the day, that's on the offense. It can't turn the ball over. Uh, on the negative side of the field and give them a short field. So uh, I was proud of the way they played. Obviously, the, the one thing we got to get off tape is the two for three on uh, fourth downs. I think two of them were the fourth and shorts. Obviously, Marvin had the one sack on the fourth down. He just got a tomahawk at the ball right there. It could have been um, a strip sack fumble opportunity. Yeah, I don't even consider him a freshman because he was an early enrollee. I mean, he he played really well on on um, on on special teams. I know on the shark team, he did a great job of setting the edge and really getting us the the tackle inside the twenty there. Um, I know he had a couple of big hits, obviously a sack. I mean, he's a special football player. It's great to get somebody from Cardinal Ritter on our team. You know, obviously Lou was kind of at Cardinal Ritter too, but uh, those two guys are are really good players from St. Louis and and. Uh, yeah, it's really exciting to see how much, you know, that that the depth in the secondary is really good. It's really good, and and uh, we got a lot of really good players. You know, I was disappointed that JC couldn't go. Just didn't feel like it was worth the risk. Um, but man, we got a lot of good guys in that back end. You go through the first touchdown, looked like Brady either looked off the coverage or maybe looked to the second read. Just wondering if execution. Yeah, it was honestly similar to what should have happened with. Um, with Sam's inside the red zone, it was a cover two on a third down. The difference was we were in a two by two instead of a three by one. Uh, Brady was able to hold the field or get the boundary safety to rotate. Makai took the middle of the field, um, and, and Brady made a good throw. So uh, it was really something that was well executed. You guys were able to come out in that second drive and put points on the board after stalling a little bit on the first drive of the game. What were the adjustments you made when South Dakota came off uh, in the defense? Yeah, we had to figure out what, you know, we were, we were planning on being a little bit more heavy on the inside zone and the gap schemes going into it versus the four down front. Um, but when they weren't playing or setting edges, then you got to go to the outside zone and we had to do a better job. You know, we started with like a jet motion to Lou and they were playing wide, so we knew we couldn't flip the jet. Quarterback did a great, great job reading it, but because of the way they're diagnosed the defense or, or the defense was set up, we were short on an overhang player. So we kind of had to eliminate that play and get to a, more three by one sets versus their their odd their balanced defense. We could gain a number by getting to the three by one. I thought Kirby did a nice job, um, you know, designing the formation and the boundary runs, which were pretty good um, for us. And then some of the tempo stuff was was pretty good. Eventually, you were able to get runs up the middle to succeed, especially on Cody's drive where he had 52 yards and finished with a two yard rushing touchdown. Did you guys make a change, or did it kind of just start opening up in the middle? Yeah, I mean, it's complimentary. Once you get them running on the outside zone, then you stick your foot in the ground and get vertical and push, vertical push. Uh, you know, the outside zone scheme is not to circle the defense. It's to divide the defense. And and uh, when you're running it at a high rate and in a good level, then you're able to stick your foot in the ground and get vertical. I think the plays that weren't so good for us was when we were trying to get too wide and, and uh, left the wide receivers in a, in a bad position to get holding. Uh, Eli, a couple more quarterback questions. I know you are fond of What do you got for me? Um, I haven't measured it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, have you ever noticed in camp or it's the same or you think it's different? I'd say he's healthy. Okay. Yeah. Um, second one, when Sam's playing. Does that count for two questions or we got, we got one? Yeah. I know, but you said two more questions. So does he get two? So we're going to take it. Observation. Okay. When Sam's in there, Brady's in the huddle. You yeah. Coach him up on the sideline. Are you evaluating that as much as not more than what happens on the field? But what does that tell you that? Here's a guy who you know could ignore this competitor, but he's trying to help. Him. Does that tell you something about him? I mean, I anything that I've ever wanted to know about Brady Cook, he's already told me. He's a great leader. He's been voted captain of the team twice. 
He shows up every single day and puts the team first. He, he wants the Missouri Tigers to win. And if that means he gets to play quarterback and we win, great. If that means Sam Horn plays quarterback, great. I think we could put anybody out there and play quarterback. At the end of the day, Brady just wants us to win. And if he can help us do that by playing, man, he's going to be excited. And I'm sure there would be some personal disappointment if he wasn't. But I guarantee he'd never show it. I guarantee that, man. That guy's got so much character, so much grit, so much determination. He put his butt on the line for everybody in this organization and every fan every single game last year with a torn uh, uh, um, whatever he had in his shoulder. And he never flinched. He never stinking flinched. And we asked him, hey, you want to take it? No. Does Doc say I can play? Doc says you're good. You can't injure it any worse. I'm in. I'm fighting my butt off for this team. So I got no questions about his determination or him putting Mizzou first or putting the team first. That guy's a team first young man, and, and uh, he's got a girlfriend. Otherwise, man, I'd be trying to get him hooked up with my, once my daughter's turned 18 because he's unbelievable. No, doesn't. Sounds like I love the young man. But I'm not going to let any of y'all decide. I'm not going to let public perception decide. We'll make a decision within these walls and we'll go with it. But I'll be honest, none of y'all's opinions matter at all. So write them what you want, say what you want. It don't matter. Nobody cares. In this locker room, nobody cares. They don't. They're, they're, we're going to prove it on the field, so nobody cares. So you can write your opinion if you want to. I'm almost going to go Nick Saban. I'm not going to tell you, so quit asking, but I'm not. Thank you evaluate the film. No problem. All mistakes got to be cleaned up, right? All, all mistakes have got to get cleaned up. I think the biggest thing we have to ask ourselves is, is this mistake fixable or does it need to be replaced? That's the question. Is this something that these guys can fix or is it a mistake that has got to be replaced? Um, usually it's, you know, effort mistakes have got to be, uh, if, if it's a lack of effort, we don't coach effort. We replace effort. If it's, hey, he's got great effort, but he's got a, a missed execution or a missed fundamental, okay, well, as a coach, what am I coaching? Am I coaching this to get fixed? Am I coaching this? Did I put him in individual? Did I give him that look? You know, And if you did, then keep working. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. M-I-Z. Gosh, I hope you all got Brady in here to answer some questions. We got Ennis.